We're here in the utility closet of my basement, and this is one of the only feasible places to put the radon pipe. And we found a place where it goes up into a dead space up above next to our garage. And anyway, uh, I marked the spot there where we want to drill a hole. I'm just going to drill a series of holes, small holes around that and then chisel it out and start digging to create a space for the radon to get sucked up into the pipe. So we'll begin this process. So I've got a shop vac to suck up the dust that the hammer drill will kick up. Got just a Harbor Freight hammer drill that's worked great for me for years. Got some ear protection, N95 mask, some gloves, so just use precautions when you're using a hammer drill. So you can see I drilled a series of holes just with the largest bit that I have. You can rent a core drilling bit to get a nice clean hole if you want, but this way I didn't have to rent anything and it saved me probably $50 or $100 to not have to rent it. And um, the professionals of the video I watched say they like to do it this way anyway. So I drilled a series of holes kind of around where where the uh, pipe needs to go. <clears throat> the, I drilled a test hole here because we're close to the wall. So here's the, the foundation wall and so there's going to be a footing. There you see that dotted line, that's where I'm guessing the footing is. That's why I put the uh, holes on the left side of the, the footing here. So you can see that little dotted line I made ahead of time. Um, so I think I made that eight inches away from the wall to try to avoid hitting the footing because we want to get the pipe down in the the dirt below the, the concrete um, and not have to drill through the footing because the footing is going to be much thicker and deeper and it's going to be really hard to get through. But I think we successfully avoided the footing. Um, and I'm going to take a different uh, hammer drill bit and chisel out the spots in between these holes here until we can reach in there and dig out some of the dirt and create a good suction spot for the radon to get sucked out of the of the house. So I bought this packet of chisel bits for the hammer drill off Amazon. Um, I think they were only like 35 or 40 dollars. They weren't that much. So they, they might not be amazing for if you're a professional, but if you're just trying to do a job yourself, then it's fairly affordable to get some bits. So I'll try one of these uh, to remove the concrete in between. Maybe this narrow one would work well to smash out that concrete in between where those holes are that I just drilled. So we'll get those attached to the, the drill bit. So it's tricky working in this tight spot behind my water heater. I wish I had better access and this is why it's important if you are building a new home or before you finish your basement to test your home for radon and get a radon pipe in place before you finish your basement. The problem is my basement is already finished and this is one of the few rooms that I can put the right on pipe unless I tear out carpet um, and move furniture and it's just a lot more of a hassle so I'm having to work in tight spaces like this to get the, the right on pipe in behind the water heater. So it's much easier to install a radon remediation system if your basement is unfinished or if you're building a new house. I would just install the pipe when you build the house in the first place and make it your life way easier. So having to do it after the home is already built is kind of a pain. So you can see I'm taking that chisel bit and I'm just working my way around to try to make a hole that fits the pipe. And every so often I'm trying to test and see if the pipe will fit there. Um, it's tedious and difficult work. So again, do it before you build your home because uh, you can do it after. It's just, just more work and more difficult.
So I got the hole about where it needed to be, and then I just took my hammer and that drill bit and kind of chisels out the rest of it. The trick in a tight space like this is you can't angle the, the hammer drill to the side very well because I have this water heater in the way, and then over here I have the wall in the way, so it's a really tight spot. And then I have a wall on this side too, so I'm covered on three out of the four sides with very little space to, uh, to get the, the hammer drill at an angle to chisel out the sides. It did help a lot having these drill bits, uh, that hammer drill bit there, that flat one. This one right here as well, that one that has the curve to it was actually really helpful as well to have. So that one has kind of a curve to it. So that was helpful. Um, and then, and then finally, when I was getting really close and there's just a few little pieces to break off, just using a hammer, I just could take the hammer and hit the sides of it. Where some safety glass it says you get little pieces of concrete flying, but I just hit the inside where I could tell it was preventing the pipe from going down. I'm just kind of hammer it out and break off tiny little chunks of concrete. So we can get this to slide in now. I'm going to start digging a little bit here. Um, it's kind of an exhausting spot to work because again it's a super tight place and another reason if you can tell I'm standing right here there's like a gas line right here feeding my water heater so I've got very little space to stand right here so another reason to check your house for radon before you finish the basement and install a radon reduction system before you finish your basement and even better do it before you finish building your house is in the process of building your house just put this pipe in you don't even have to put the fan on just put the pipe in when you first build the house it would be it'd make your life so much easier if you needed if you needed to connect a fan to it later it'd be really easy so it should be part of the building code to have radon fans but anyway so here we are So I started vacuuming out the uh, concrete debris and it worked really well to just use a shop vacuum, vacuum it out. The vacuum would get clogged with larger pieces of concrete. I just have to stop the vacuum and disconnect the hose right there and then just, I've been dumping the bigger pieces in this, this bag. Um, so the, the good news is, is underneath our, our foundation is pea gravel. And that makes a huge difference. It makes the, uh, the radon system work better because when there's gravel like that underneath a uh, foundation, that means that the air will flow to this suction point pretty well, and I hopefully won't have to turn the fan on very high. Radon systems can use a fair amount of electricity, so if you can get an adjustable fan that only uses the amount of suction that you need to get rid of the radon, then that will save you a lot of electricity, because this fan has to run 24-7 all the time, all year round, and so the great, the great news is, is there's gravel underneath the foundation, which that will allow the suction to work better, which means I don't have to run the fan at too high of a speed, hopefully, which will hopefully do the trick to eliminate the radon. Another way that the, you can make the fan work better is to caulk. See how I caulked right here around the edges of the foundation so that there's less of a chance for the radon air to leak into the house and more of the suction will go t into that tube instead of sucking out through the cracks in the foundation so you can see I caulked a bunch of cracks. Again, this is another reason to do this while before you finish the basement, because over here where I have carpet, um, there's probably cracks in the foundation places where the carpet's at. And I could pull up the carpet and caulk all the cracks. It'd be a lot of work. I already have furniture and things down in the basement here. So another reason to do this before you finish the basement or before you even put furniture down in a basement to pull up the carpet and caulk the cracks. Um, or at least caulk all the cracks before you finish the basement at the very least, even if you don't install a radon system. So that is what I'm working on now. The, the awesome thing is this vacuum sucks up that gravel pretty well, so it's going to make digging out. You're supposed to dig out oh, like a five, five or ten gallons worth bucket worth of material so that there's kind of an air gap underneath there where uh, this, it can draw the air into this point better. So I'm going to use this vacuum and suction up a bunch of this gravel and it's working good so far. Another cool thing is I didn't even have to throw away this gravel. I can use it somewhere in my yard, the gravel that's underneath that I'm taking out of the foundation. We xeriscaped part of our yard last fall and summer and so I'm able to 
put some of this gravel right here and then we're gonna get a fresh top coat of gravel that goes over the top anyway but um, anyway it's nice when you don't have to throw things away and add to the landfill
Got a lot of gravel out of there. That uh, should be enough. It's you're supposed to get a couple five gallon buckets out. I'll have to check the number on that again, but I'm really glad that there's a lot of gravel in the area so it will suction better and it was really easy to excavate because I just sucked it up with the shop vac um, and came out really quickly and easily. So I'm gonna take a, take a look at the hole here. <clears throat> so I can see the footing. We're right close to the footing, which is fine. We just wanted to miss it, but we got a good amount of gravel excavated here. Let's get the light. Get a better look at that. See, so you can see the, uh, the footing goes down there and just sucked out a bunch. So you can see down in the hole that we made, there's the, the footing that continues to go down. So that's why I had to come away from the wall here by about six to eight inches. Um, I think in my case, eight inches, I came away from the wall. Um, we missed it just by about an inch, which is perfect. Um, and then we just used this vacuum, shop vac, and sucked out a whole bunch of gravel there. And that will create an airspace so that the suction will work better. So I might suck out a little bit more, but it's, it's looking pretty good. So it went quicker than I thought to get this done. So the internet tells me I'm supposed to remove about five gallons worth of gravel if I have gravel underneath the foundation, which I do. So I've already removed about five gallons. I might do a tiny bit more. It says if you have tight clay or tight soil that doesn't allow airflow as much, you're supposed to remove almost as much. You can remove up to 15 gallons, so like three of the five gallon buckets from Home Depot. Um, in this case, I had this thing almost full, so I think I've done at least five gallons, maybe seven or eight gallons, but I might do a tiny bit more. Take a look at it. I don't want to undermine the foundation below my hot water heater, which is really heavy, so I don't want to that to settle or sink because we're kind of close to that, um, just because we had to, because that's where the where we could put it. So I don't want to remove too much material to where it undermines uh, the, the foundation, but enough to where you have enough airflow so that the radon suction system will work properly.